Oh, this is Halo 5 Tutor with another Halo 5 multiplayer gameplay commentary. As always, I'm bringing you the tips and tricks that you need to step up your game and take it to the next level. I'll help you win more often and have more fun while you're doing it. This time I'm playing a uh, Slayer game type and I have an excellent offensive game. I get in here, get a double kill to start the game off. Uh, things are going very well for me, but I want to focus actually on defense this game, and I'll tell you why. And in order for me to really explain why, I got to go back to why I started making YouTube videos in the first place. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, I've been making videos since Halo 3. Uh, but before I started making videos, I remember playing Halo multiplayer for the very first time, Halo 3. And... I thought it was absolutely incredible. I was addicted to media. I thought it was amazing that you're playing with people from all over the world. You're playing this real time live action game where you have to make split second decisions. And I just thought it was so fascinating. I just, I, I absolutely loved it. The problem was I was terrible. I mean, I was really bad. Probably worse than any of you have ever been. I mean, most Slayer games I'd get one or two or three kills and usually just cause I got lucky. Uh, but I would die 10 or 12 times and it got to the point where going into matches I would feel sorry for my teammates before it even began I'd feel sorry and I'd think to myself We're gonna lose and it's going to be because of me because I was just consistently bad It didn't matter what the what the map was what the game type was we were gonna lose and it was gonna be my fault and that, and that was being realistic not just hard on myself uh, so eventually I started looking for videos online to try and get better at Halo. Um, but I didn't really find a lot that were helpful, to be honest. Uh, mostly it was montages at the time, which is just highlights uh, with music playing in the background, usually some rock and roll or something like that. And uh, the other type of video, if there was commentary, it was usually some guy in his basement uh, swearing and cursing and trying to act tough and not really being generally helpful just kind of being crude and i didn't find that you know i that didn't appeal to me either and so i i had to kind of learn things as i went along i had to use my experience to get better at the game but eventually i did i got a lot better and it got to the point where frequently i was the best player on the team instead of the worst player but the problem was the circle of life, what goes around comes around. Eventually as I got better, I was being paired with teammates who were much worse. And then I would get so frustrated those teammates who would only get one or two or three kills and die a dozen times. Because you're you know, no matter how good you play, you can't overcome uh multiple teammates going, you know, minus ten or worse in a gameplay. I mean it's so difficult to overcome no matter how well you play. So of course, I, I sympathized with these players because I understood how difficult it was back when I was starting out and more importantly, how frustrating it can be. So I decided uh, to start making videos. And so I started making my YouTube videos and it, it caught, along, caught on and people began to watch. And uh, even if it was only a few people watching the videos, I thought that's just a few extra teammates that I'm going to have one day that aren't going to play terrible. If I can just get people to at least play average, then uh, you know we're going to get a, we're going to be ahead of the game here. <laughs> if we can take you from like terrible to average, that's a success. So I started making videos, and I realized that offense is really easy to see. You can watch my gameplay here. You see some great offensive plays. You can watch a lot of other players who are much better offensively than I am. Uh, and you can see what they're doing and try to mimic those. But that takes time and a lot of practice, and it's not always easy to do. Uh, so if you see that your kill-death ratio is not satisfactory, if it's below a 1 or below whatever number you want it to be, um, you might find that it's going to be easier to improve your defense to reduce the number of deaths that you have rather than increase the number of kills that you have. So let's just say, for example, you tend to average uh, three kills and ten deaths every game. Well, it's going to take you a lot of practice to get better than those three kills. But with very little effort, you can reduce those deaths down to five or less, maybe. And then once you find that you're dying less often, you may find that you have more opportunities to score kills. So I want to talk about defense this, this video because it's something that you can work on right away 
you'll see noticeable improvement very quickly and you can you know even if you're not contributing as many kills to your team as you would like at least you're not holding them back and you can let the stronger offensive players pull their weight uh earn most of the kills you can surprise su provide support gain experience and at least try not to die like a whole bunch of times so anyway let's jump into the specific tips here i just wanted to give you a little bit of background uh the the first thing of course is teamwork now of course teamwork works on both the offensive and defensive side of the game but when you're when you're moving together with your team they are the best defense that you have because they can help you eliminate any kind of threat that you come up against which is fantastic defense and also it it spreads the number of shots, right? So if you encounter opponents, they're going to be distributing their shots between you and your teammates. So you're going to die less quickly. So by sticking together with your team, that's very important. And now it doesn't, uh, ideally you want to have friends and you want to be communicating on the headset. But if you're just with random people, no headsets, you can still stick together with teammates, follow them around. If they die, go find somebody else. Uh, don't just go out there lone wolf because that is going to get you killed. And on the same token, if you see three red X's on the screen, that means your whole team is dead. That means find a safe place to sit tight for five seconds. Okay, especially if you're not a pro player, you don't need to be taking on the entire team in a four-on-one -on situation where your team just about got exterminated, okay? So if you see your whole team wiped out, just fall back. Give it five seconds for them to respawn. You can wait for five seconds and let them come back in the game. Follow them around, stick together, work together. So those are some teammate tips you can use right off the bat. Number two, I'm going to talk about uh, letting the fight come to you. Okay, just like in life, uh, you know, in Halo, you don't need to go looking for trouble. Trouble will find you, I promise. Most of the maps here on Halo 5 are pretty small. Smaller than many of the maps in previous games. Not too small, I think they're just the right size. But what I'm trying to say is they're not too big. So if you find a really great place on the map where you're up a little bit higher, where you have some great visibility, some good escape routes, you don't need to give up that position for no good reason. If you just wait five seconds or less, I guarantee you'll have an opportunity to get a kill. Uh, somebody is going to run past, walk past, especially if you have excellent visibility. You can, some, can put some shots down. And if absolutely necessary, at the very least, you can move off that point on your terms to go help a teammate or grab a weapon or something like that. Uh, so find an elevated position, a position where you have a great uh, view, where you have good escape routes, where you can move to assist teammates. And, and don't move off that point necessarily unless you have good reason. Don't just go looking for problems down on the ground level. Just because all your opponents are down on the ground level, they're probably just trying to escape uh, a bad situation. Don't go chasing them down there. That's the other thing I want to talk about is don't chase your opponents. Certainly... If you, if you get the jump on an opponent, you get a few shots into them, and they get away, they get around a corner, think twice about chasing them. Now, if, you're, if you feel confident with your skill set, chasing sometimes works out okay. But if you're still in that level where you're trying to improve your defensive skills, don't chase your opponents because you're probably going to run into a crowd or a grenade or both. Okay, so if you don't get that kill right off the bat when you get the jump on your opponent don't go chasing them okay go back find a strong position and wait for your next opportunity uh and and so that's what i want to bring to another point is is run for cover when you have to okay if you're getting absolutely blasted if you're outnumbered if your shields are down if it's not looking like a winnable situation like there's no problem if you're trying to improve your defense to go run for cover because every point that you don't allow your opponents to score, that's kind of like scoring a point for your own team in a sense, right? So find opportunities to find cover, recharge your shields, regroup with teammates. Don't go out there lone wolf style just looking for problems. Another thing you can do, and this is a tip that not many people do, but it's very simple, is when you are responding, look at, look at the other team's statistics. I guarantee almost all the time, there's at least one or two players that aren't really doing that well. Even if their team is doing very well, usually there's one or two players that are not doing very well. You can see they've got a lot of deaths. They're probably playing recklessly. 
well, try to target those uh, opponents. If you have uh, an opportunity where you see multiple opponents on the battlefield, well, target the guy that's picked up a lot of devs already. He's probably playing recklessly. He doesn't know when to run for cover. He doesn't know how to play defensively. Those are going to be opportunities for you to get much easier kills. At the same time, look for players who are on their own. Don't go running into a crowd. Don't go seeking out the entire opposing team all by yourself. Look for isolated opponents and avoid groups. Another thing that you can use to improve your defense is the power-ups that are on the map. We've got active camouflage and overshield are back. And those are those are defensive abilities. Those are not going to improve your offense, really. Those are defensive abilities. So what you want to do is you want to identify where on each map the power-ups are going to spawn. Where does that OS spawn? Where does the invisibility spawn? And how, and how and you want to check it often. Every time you run past that area, check to see if it's come back up yet. And if you're picking it up often, you can usually time. It's going to be like, I think, three minutes out. Maybe somebody can leave a comment if they know for sure. But I think generally the power-ups spawn about every three minutes or so. So if you grabbed one, about three minutes later, be looking for it to come back up again. Those are going to improve your defense. If you've got overshield, obviously... <laughs> it's going to be twice as hard to take you down. If you've got active camo, the active camo is very powerful in Halo 5. It lasts a really long time, and it's very potent. Uh, what I mean by that is that it 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 is very... You cannot see somebody who's using active camo appropriately. They are invisible. So that's another thing to keep aware of. Uh, the last tip I'm going to give you when it comes to defense is the respawns are kind of weird. When you respawn in Halo 5, a lot of times you're pointing like a wall or, you know, I don't know, you're facing really unusual directions. So instead of just run, like respawning, then running straight, look around, figure out where you've respawned on the map, decide where you want to go or identify where your teammates are, then go that way. Don't just respawn and start running, like I said, because you're just going to end up in trouble doing that. You want to... Uh, decide where you want to go and how you want to get there. I hope the video has been helpful. This is Halo 5 Tutor signing